Welcome back to Educator. We're going to take a look at two further examples that will make use of the quotient rule. And so in this first example, we'd like to calculate the derivative of radical x over x squared plus 3. And when I say radical x, that's just another um, way to speak about the square root of x. So let's get started with this example. So we would like to differentiate square root of x over x squared plus 3. So by the quotient rule, we'll take lower function x squared plus 3 times derivative of upper function, derivative of square root of x, minus upper function as is, so that's the square root of x, times derivative of lower function, derivative of x squared plus 3, all divided by x squared plus 3 whole thing squared. Now we're about to have to differentiate square root of x, and so over on the side here, let's just look at that for a moment. So when it comes to differentiating square root of x, realize that square root of x is x to the 1 half power, and so the derivative will be 1 half x to the negative 1 half power. In other words, 1 over 2 radical x. And again, if you want to look at that in a little more detail, just keep in mind that radical x is x to the 1 half power, and then use the power rule for differentiation. So coming back to our example, let's work on the numerator. We have x squared plus 3 times derivative of square root of x, which gives us, like we just looked at, 1 over 2 square root of x. Then we're subtracting off square root of x times derivative of x squared plus 3. Derivative of x squared plus 3 is a 2x. And then we'll divide by x squared plus 3, whole thing squared. And now we just have to see if there's any simplifying we can do, and there is going to be a little bit, and the algebra is a little bit messy, but but we'll make our way through it. So I'm going to distribute the 1 over 2 radical x. And maybe um, over here on the side, I'll just say a little about what's about to happen. We are about to multiply x squared times 1 over radical x. So that's like an x squared times x to the negative 1 half. And let me go ahead and actually write that down x squared times x to the negative one-half. The exponents add, and so 2 plus negative one-half gives us an exponent of three-halves. So coming back to our example, when I multiply the 1 over 2 radical x times the x squared, we get a one-half x to the three-halves. Then, multiplying the 1 over 2 radical x times the 3, we get a 3 halves times 1 over radical x. And there is no really nice way to write that, and I'll just write that as 3 over 2 radical x. Then, if you look at the x to the 1 half power times x, maybe I'll write that over here on the side as well x to the 1 half power times x is like x to the 1 half power times x to the first, and so the exponents add, and we get an x to the 3 halves. And so we have a 2 times x to the 3 halves. And then the denominator is x squared plus 3 quantity squared. Now notice that we we do have two like terms here. We have two terms involving x to the 3 halves. And so I'm going to go ahead and combine those terms. And so we'll have coefficients of a half minus 2. We'll get negative 3 halves. The middle term also has a 3 halves. And if we wanted to, we could factor out a 3 halves. But we don't need to for this to be fully simplified. And so I'm going to just leave that 3 halves multiplying each term. And so what we're getting here 
Again, the first and third terms are x to the 3 halves terms, and we have a 1 half minus 2. And so we have a negative 3 halves x to the 3 halves plus, and in a way I'm, I'm mixing square root and exponent notation here, so maybe in my answer I'll just go all to exponents and write the 3 over 2 radical x as a 3 halves x to the negative 1 half. And then the denominator is x squared plus 3 squared. And this is our solution. It's messy looking, um, but this is what it is. This is the derivative of radical x over x squared plus 3. And so this completes um, example 4.